Now, let's venture out to Kenya to hear from a leader and an advocate for women in so many profound ways. She's Somali-born, a British psychotherapist and social activist, the founder of the Dahlia Project. She's fought a long battle to prevent female genital mutilation, FGM. It is a great honor to welcome from Kenya live, Leila Hussein. I adore you. I do. <laughs> Thank you, Gabriella. Oh, oh my God. Thank you, everyone, for having me today. It's, it's a pleasure. I just, I just want you to have the stage. You have such an incredible story. You're an incredible advocate. You're a force of nature. And I really look forward to working in the field with you. You know, COVID has separated us, but, but I know that we shall be together. Thank you. It connected Lea. us. <laughs> yes, it did. It connected us. Absolutely. And now we're, <laughs> and now we're together, yeah. but, but yeah. we will be in the field together. I want to, to dive deeper into the world. We will manifest this. It's going to happen. Exactly. Thank you, Leila. The stage is Thank yours. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Uh, uh, I mean, first of all, thank you to the Never Alone Summit for having me, the Chopra Foundation and the John Wick Brick Mental Health Foundation for having me today. Instead of giving you a PowerPoint, I thought it might be best just to tell you my story. Uh, on a beautiful sunny day uh, at the age of seven, I was pinned down by people who I trusted the most to a table. My legs were spread apart and a knife was taken to my genitalia. I've undergone a practice called female genital mutilation. This is where the female genitalia, the clitoris is removed, the labias are removed and stitch, the remaining skin is stitched together. You're expected to menstruate, urinate and give birth at some point. As you can imagine, the physical impact that has on you, but I cannot even fathom the psychological impact this has on you. This has led me to my work as an activist on advocating against female genital mutilation. Let me just give you a little picture of what we are dealing with here. Over 200 million women and girls globally are now dealing with this horrific violence I just described. I'm currently working in Africa as a global advocacy director for the Africa-led movement. Over 30 African countries are dealing with this currently. 10 seconds, every 10 seconds, a girl will be cut. By the time I get off this screen, 90 girls would have been cut. By the time the three-day summit ends, 25,920 girls will have been mutilated. This is a pandemic, and unfortunately, this is causing serious mental health issues. I'm currently one of the leadership, part of the leadership team who is part of the Africa-led movement on ending female gen genital mutilation in Africa. However, part of our work is really to implement mental health work. It's very crucial as a program that we support FGM survivors, very strong activists who are leading this campaign. It's extremely important that emotional well-being is maintained and kept safe at all times. What is the Africa-led movement? The Africa-led movement, it's a movement led by young activists, courageous campaigners, health professionals who are really to make a change in women's lives. But fundamentally, it's there to protect the lives of girls. Our program is to ensure girls are centered around this whole program and to ensure they are safe. So mental well-being is a big part of our work. I would like to repeat that one more time. It's interesting that I got invited to speak at a Never, um, Never Alone Summit. Unfortunately, when dealing with this issue, I cannot express enough how alone it feels to be in this working on this. There's, re, there's, there's been many researchers that has proven the most vulnerable human being globally is the girl African child. The girl African child is the most uh, marginalized and vulnerable globally. And FGM impacts the African girl child. So we must ensure she's never left alone through this. However, there is hope. I'm a mother to a now 18 year old who hasn't been cut. But my daughter's not just been protected by female genital mutilation. Why has this even happened? I think it's the issue that we need to tackle first. I was cut to be controlled physically, emotionally, fundamentally, it was to control my female sexuality. And part of my work as a psychotherapist 
by creating safe spaces for women and girls was to reclaim their bodies. However, at the Africa-led movement, one of the things that we really recognize is to ensure there is changes at the foundation level, at a community level, at the policy level, and a government level. Because to ensure our well-being as a young girl, I needed to feel safe. My daughter needed to feel safe. And we need to ensure girls are not forgotten. And what worries me with COVID, yet again, we are forgetting those vulnerable young women. Just a few pointers uh, I would love to give you in terms of how we can ensure this happens. Implementing mental health programs is absolutely key. And this is something that we really are pushing for in the work that we're doing. Ensuring girls have safe homes because safety is a big part, again, of our well-being. But the one we don't fundamentally ever mention is resources, funding. If we do not finance, if we don't finance, we are saying our girls are not valued enough. We know globally girls are still marginalized when it comes to resources. So we need to ensure this is done appropriately and done well. Yet again, I want to give you hope. There's a massive change happening in Africa. I'm very proud of working from here. Mental health is now the forefront of a lot of the work that we're doing. But unfortunately, because of the recent COVID-19, uh, 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 COVID many, many budgets have been cut from a lot of these programs. It's actually extremely frightening. I wanted to come to this community today to really plead with you to be part of this movement. Whether you offer your services as a journalist to tell these stories, whether you're a therapist or someone who works in mental health or well-being, who can come and be part of this movement is absolutely key. But resources are again needed. I'm someone who's not ashamed to bring that up. However, I think it's important that we recognize there's a bigger picture here. A child is being violated as we speak. And as a psychotherapist, by creating these safe spaces, one of the key things is always ensuring the women and girls I work with to remind them what their experience is not culture, it's not religion, this is control, this is violence, touching a child's genitalia is never acceptable, it doesn't matter where you are from the world, this is abuse. And it's our responsibility to ensure this does not continue. But it's not just the physical aspect we need to protect, we, need to, we must protect the mental health aspect of all of this. If you're a policymaker, you really play a key role in making sure our well-being is key. By making sure we have mental health programs in schools, uh, in, our, in our education system, especially with the African led movement, one of the things we're gonna absolutely ensure this is implemented into our work and influence policymakers because mental well-being is absolutely key. I am very proud of ha to have developed an emotional well-being tool for activists working in Kenya who now who now absolutely use this to protect themselves and the communities they work with. I don't want to take too much time of this space because there's a lot of work that we must be doing. I want to leave you all with a question, which is what role will I play to ensure the well-being, the emotional well-being of young African girls because they are the most vulnerable? You just need to look at me and my daughter. My daughter is now a nine, nearly 19 years old, free from FGM, talks about mental health freely, open about talking about emotional needs. We need, a we need to start creating a world where girls, and I'm going to keep saying African girls, to come forward and feel safe. Thank you so much. <laughs>